The difference is don't act afraid and don't think afraid. Great performers hire me to help them become even greater. Look, I'm gonna talk to you either way and get your attention. You gotta have your product and then tailor it to what they're what they want. You don't have to be another statistic. We've assembled five experts to help you out. First up, what to do if you've lost your job. Doug Hirshhorn is a peak performance coach. Hey, Doug, good morning good to morning. you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You've got to stand out from the competition if you're looking for a job. You say start with your resume. That's the most important place. Absolutely. I think most people make the mistake of thinking that they have to identify their skills in their resume. And what happens now, you've got a lot of people looking for jobs fewer jobs out there. You've got to differentiate yourself and that comes by identifying your passion, letting that be expressed in your resume. So it shouldn't look like a business document. It's just got to look like it came from your heart. Absolutely. You want to, you want to make the impression that they're reading it and saying, this person's different. They've got something. You send that resume in. It sits on a desk. You say, if you don't get a phone call from that employer, don't sit on your butt. Absolutely not. I think most people make the mistake of thinking they do the woe is me. They feel sorry for themselves. Go out there and find out what job you want. Go out there and knock on the doors. So no, the show up at the place you're applying Absolutely. for the job, say, I'm the guy who sent the, the resume, yeah. what would you think of it? Absolutely, and, and, and stay and be persistent. And the final thing you say is it's okay to be afraid when you don't have a job. Right, there's this whole conception that fear is a bad thing. You have to understand that we're all going to feel fear. The difference is don't act afraid and don't think afraid. But you can be afraid inside. Absolutely. Doug Hershorn, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Where were you when you had your big idea? At your desk? In your car? at the store. Dr. Doug, it's very, you play a lot in the mindset game. You, right. you coach businesses on peak performance. It's very easy. All right, I got a million. I'm there. <laughs> what are the pitfalls that, to not get too big for your britches, and what are the important things going forward? Well, the important things going forward that, that he's talking about here is he's still got a passion and a flair and a fire for what he's doing. So he's kept that even when he was at zero and a million. That passion will carry him through to the next level of performance without a doubt. All right, Dr. Doug Hershow, and you specialize in getting business people in the right mindset. Right. Bruce and MG, you've kind of seen that piece. Do they have the mindset? Do they have what it takes? They absolutely do. And, and there's a remarkable vibe that's coming off the two of these people. I had an opportunity to speak with them backstage and as they're walking in here. They get it. They see it. They got a passion. They got that core. And they're running with the ball and they're going to score a touchdown. Now, you talk about the right mindset being the three C's. What yeah. are those? Confidence, control, and courage. Those are the three C's that I found in my opportunities to work with some of the top performers around. They all share these three things. Confidence, control, and courage. <laughs> You have support for your family and kids, but what you don't have support for is possibly helping to put that business plan in place. I'm all about accountability. I will give you my email address. Okay. And, and I'm telling you, because I am- I've already given her my business card. Well, that's fine. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to charge her. That's the difference. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm never pro bono. This is, this is the way I want to I wanna give thanks, honestly, for what you're, not, not just what your husband's doing overseas, but for the sacrifices you are making so that my five-year-old daughter and my two-year-old son and I can come out here and make a living, okay? And and, and if I can do anything, and it's helping you, a real person that's in the real situation, that's what I'm going to do. Okay? Let's bring on our, our head coach here. Doug, I mean, we're hearing a lot about reaction, overreaction, emotion, responding yeah. to, you know, subprimes, responding to the worries over the unwinding of the carry trade. What are you telling people right now? Well, it's more, it's more not necessarily what I'm telling people, but what I'm hearing from people and the feedback that I'm getting is that uh, the markets are made of emotions because they're a function of, of opinions and millions and millions of opinions placing bets at the same time. When you have volatility in the markets like this and uncertainty and, and almost an unclear direction, you have a lot of fear coming into place and a, and a lot of uncertainty. And, and the thing that helps people in those, in those times is we're all human and going to experience those things going back and forth like we're hearing in this fantastic panel. But you've got to remember that, that if the fundamentals are in place, uh, look at things objectively, look at the risk-reward evaluation of trades in the markets and situation. Remember, it's, it's a long-term play. It's not just one month or one day or one week. You gotta look at things like a whole season. If you go 0 for 10, doesn't mean you stink as a ball player. It means you gotta look at the whole season, your performance over time. I agree with that 100%, Marwood. I think at the end of the day, you have to look at fundamentals. Mm -hmm.